When people ask me what my favorite synthesizer is, I say Korg MS-20. And when they ask me why, I say because it's a good synthesizer. Alright, in all seriousness, this is the Korg MS-20, a Japanese synthesizer from 1978. This is the original vintage one. They've since made a reissue, which I haven't played, so I can't comment on it. But I'm gonna speak about this synthesizer and why I love it. characteristic almost like a whale call here are the few reasons why I love this synthesizer primarily because it's very universal sound wise it's one of the few synths that can go from very smooth kind of calming flutes to angry like a cat being drowned I'll show you what I mean so I can quickly switch switch to a triangle wave close the filter Get this really nice eerie kind of pad but then as I crank the filter up switch it to a sawtooth just like that, so it's very, very expressive. And so far I've only touched one oscillator and one filter, but the cool thing about the MS-20, which makes it unique, is that it has a dual filter, so it has a high pass filter as well, so you can combine the two together. And create these very vocal, almost formant-like sounds. Oscillator. Such a beautiful synthesizer. So that's the main thing about it is I always find a use for it in whatever song I'm working on, I feel like it always finds a place. And the reason is because the sound cuts through really nicely and because it's so expressive in terms of the hands-on controls. And this brings me to the other part of why I like it is the kind of tactile feeling of the knobs. I've played a bunch of different vintage synths and modern synths as well. And the MS-20 still, even at this age, uh, has really, really nice feeling knobs that are very responsive and solid. And this is something you kind of take for granted, especially if you've never played a hardware synth. It seems like they should all function the same way. But there's so much to it that is how the controls feel in your hand and how they respond and how they're calibrated to a certain setting. The, I find that Korg synths, especially the vintage ones, and I'm sure the new ones too, except I haven't really played much of the new ones, 
you have really solid knobs. I know this is, seems like a very minor thing, but when you're kind of in the middle of expressing yourself in terms of a patch, the the way the the filter knob is very kind of loose really uh, suggests a certain kind of parameter tweaking that you wouldn't have if the knob felt too stiff or if it was kind of shaky. So it, it really kind of goes in hand in hand with the patch itself. And then the sturdiness of the switch type knobs for the oscillators, everything feels very solid. Like you wouldn't think that it's a vintage synth uh, by how kind of well it's built. Obviously the keyboard is not the best keyboard in the world. It's kind of, um, I don't know, plasticky, I guess. Uh, which a lot of vintage keyboards were pretty terrible, I would say, with exception for a few, like the SH-101 has a really nice keyboard for its age. Um, but that aside, the kind of front panel controls are very solid. So yeah, those are the two things. The one is the sound and the kind of versatility of the sound. The other one is the controls. Speaking of the sound, I should mention that obviously it's not the fattest sound, quote unquote. Like when you think of a vintage synth like a a mini Moog or a Pro One, uh, something along those lines, those things will like shatter the earth. Obviously the MS-20 can go bassy if you wanted to, especially with the high pass filter, you can kind of beef up some of the lower frequencies and really turn it into a fat kick machine. But it's pure kind of default tone, doesn't suggest that kind of Oberheim-esque, like earth shattering sound. And in a way I, I see that as a pro here, especially if you're going for like a desert island single synth. I find that these super fat quote unquote synthesizers are most of the time tricky to fit into a mix. They sound good when you're kind of noodling on their own, but as soon as you try to put it in in the middle of drums and bass and other stuff going on, you find yourself having to EQ it anyways, and then you're kind of losing some of that fatness. And I find the MS-20 has this perfect kind of middle range where it's not too uh, brassy and nasally, but it's not too subby either. It has this perfect cut through kind of default sound. Uh, so you don't have to tweak it too much. I always find a way to kind of squeeze it into some of my songs, whether I'm playing lead patches or just pads by kind of multi-tracking uh, it. So besides the sound and the kind of feeling of the knobs, Obviously there's the patch panel and it has a, uh, what's called a signal processor or an external signal processor. So you can run uh, different sounds through its filters and get really kind of angry type of sounds. I did a few videos where I made songs using this feature. So check those out if you're interested. Um, and the patch panel is really cool, but that, I, to be honest, I wouldn't, that's not why I picked this as a desert island synth, although it definitely helps. I don't find myself using the patch panel too much other than doing simple things like uh, assigning vibrato to the mod wheel, which unfortunately you have to do through the patch panel um, unless you want to twist uh, the like amount of the LFO. Uh, but, but that's definitely a plus for it. And I guess the, the third big element besides the sound and the knobs for me is the look of it, which I know shouldn't matter for a synth, but <laughs> to me it does. The way a synth looks and the way it makes you feel when you play it, when you look at it, I feel like for me at least, it definitely um, tends to push me towards some kind of sound and it, it plays with the inspiration. And this synth definitely has this really cool punk rock kind of look to it. This It's very obvious and unique of a synth. Like if you see it from a distance, you automatically know what it is with this kind of lifted panel. And of course, there's a practical side to the physical design as well, whereas the front panel is really inviting. It's kind of in your face, almost like this little switchboard. Uh, so it really invites you to tweak it versus a flat paneled synth where you have to kind of lean over to look at the settings. Um, but of course, this is not the primary reason this is my Desert Island synth, but it's the combination of those things together, the sound, the physical feeling of the controls, the, the versatility of the filters and how you can go from any kind of sound. You can make kick drums, snare drums, uh, basses, leads, pads, really quickly because of how everything is laid out. Uh, in addition to that and the sound, the look of it kind of creates this complete package that uh, to me, if I had to sell all my synths, I'd probably still keep this one. But yeah, so obviously it's not a perfect synth. Obviously there are synths that are fatter, there are synths that are polyphonic, um, that are more expressive, this and that. But as kind of like an average whole package, uh, the MS-20 definitely ranks super high for me and I, I don't see myself ever selling it unless 
I'm in some financial crisis. And even then I'd consider <laughs> sacrificing other elements of my life. So yeah, I'm not trying to say that one synth is better than the other. I love all the synthesizers I have and each one has its own place and purpose and each one has its core strengths and weaknesses. But just overall for me, if I had to pick and keep just one, if I was forced to, it would be this little guy. All right, let me know what you think of the MS-20 or what your favorite slash Desert Island synthesizer is. Let me know in the comments and we can have a nice civil discussion. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.